Hello and welcome to The Yacking Show. This is an excerpt from one of our premium episodes. If you'd like to watch the full hour-long episode and get the transcript, hop over to our website, theyackingshow.com, and sign up to become a member. Hello, it's Peter Wright and Kathleen Beauvais in Ontario, Canada, with another premium episode of The Yacking Show. This brings you premium content exclusively for our premium members. And we have another expert with us today. And we know we've spoken to her before. This is going to be really good stuff. But first, let's introduce Kathleen from down the road in Waterloo, Ontario. Hi, Kathleen. How are you today? I'm doing great, Peter. And, and you're right. We always have wonderful experts on uh, on this show. And today is absolutely no exception. We have the great pleasure of welcoming back Sandy Rodriguez. Rodriguez. She is a business owner, a speaker, an author. She's also an Evernote certified expert. Now, this is a software that helps you build systems to streamline your business. And today, she will be doing a presentation on Evernote and how it can help you in your business. Welcome, Sandy. Hello. How are you? Hi, Kathleen. Hi, Hi Peter. It's good to be Hi. here with you again. So I'm going to hand it off to you immediately, Sandy. I'm going to do a screen share. Uh, you're you're welcome to start your presentation whenever you are ready. All righty, let's dive right in then. All right, so oh, here you we should, go. Yes, you uh -huh. should be looking at uh, yes a little introduction here of starting with the basics. Why choose Evernote? I mean, I know why. <laughs> I love it. It's a great app but why should other people consider choosing it? Um, I just went right to Evernote because they have this described very well. It gives you everything you need to keep your life organized. It's a great note taking, project planning and uh, information holding app, whether it's personal information, business information, it's simple and easy to use. It's accessible everywhere you need to be. Like it says, take it everywhere. It's on the web, it's on your phone, it's on your tablet, it's on your computer. Capture anything, keep it together, and find it fast. And that searchability is one of the biggest features of Evernote. You can find what you want really quickly. So let's take just a quick overview before we dive deep here. Um, Evernote 10 was released at the end of 2020, and one of the features they brought out is what they call Home. And that's the picture you're looking at here. And it gives you a nice overview of what's important to you. You decide what goes in here, as you see over here on this Customize button. Home can be set up the way you want it to be. You can organize it your way. You can uh, decide what you want to see, how you want to see it. There are lots of filters, lots of view options. So you can customize it work the way that your brain does. Um, you can actually sketch and annotate. This is particularly effective on tablets. So if you've got a, um, an iPad and an Apple Pencil, you can go in there and just hand draw things which is really amazing. Even if you don't, you can do a lot with an annotate feature. For example, this is a screenshot. I can literally mm -hmm. right click on this, choose annotate this image, and I can come over here, add text, add arrows, shapes, oh, highlighting, wow. all kinds of things right to this um, image. Yikes, it jumped back. <laughs> So even without an Apple Pencil, you can um, make notes on things that you attach, even PDFs. It's a little more limited, but you can even annotate PDFs a little bit. Wow. Um, you can turn your to-do lists into your to-done lists because we have tasks. We're going to dive into that a little deeper in just a few minutes. And you can set up recurring tasks. So keep track of the things that are going on over and over again, set the times and due dates. And again, we'll get into the tasks and talk about that a little bit more. It's uh, it's a lot of information. And the beauty of it is that Evernote will remember everything so that you can accomplish anything. It helps you stay productive in a way that almost no other app I've ever seen does. It's flexible. It's it That's the challenge and the joy. So the joy is that you can make Evernote work the way you want. The challenge is you've got to make Evernote work the way you want. So that's where Evernote <laughs> experts come into play because we explain all the different features and how you can customize them and structure them and make it work the way your brain works. It works on iPhones, Windows computers, Androids, Macs, Linux, it doesn't matter. Well, it works on all the platforms. 
There's a web clipper. I've been using that a lot lately because I've been doing some research where I can clip just articles. I can save URLs. I can put all of that in one notebook for whatever project I'm working on. So it's wonderful for that. Um, character recognition, you can fill, find your notes looking for keywords, even if those words are in photos, scans of a whiteboard, a business card, or you hand wrote it or it's in a document. Um, one of it, wow. That's one of its strongest features, yes, is that searchability. Um, it, the web application is just about as powerful as the desktop application now. That wasn't true, but it is now. So you can have all the same functions no matter where you're accessing the app. And one thing that I've always appreciated about Evernote is the integrations. They play nice in the sandbox. They will work with a lot of apps, whereas many are so proprietary, they won't. So mm -hmm. that is one thing I find of great value. And so I ask, do you have an Evernote account or do you need to sign up for Evernote? If you need one, you go just to evernote.com to sign up for free to get started. You'll find paid options too, but we'll get into why I recommend people start with free. Well, let's just get right into it. I think it's the best way to try an app is to do the free trial, look at it, nose around with it and see what it can do, see if it will meet your needs before you start paying for it. Um, I start my tech journeys that way. This one took me no time at all to decide the paid version with all the bells and whistles was going to be important. There are different levels and things are changing right now. And I want to address that up front. So Evernote was acquired by a company called Bending Spoons this year. And I know that's caused some concern, but I want to let you know that we are talking as experts with the Bending Spoons leadership team. They are listening to us. They are implementing and addressing, first of all, some of the problems with reliability and stability that had cropped up. That's the first priority is to get them fixed. And they are fully committed to making Evernote better than ever and continuing to grow it in terms of what features are added and its functionality. So I am 100% behind what's going on. And I'll tell you as an expert, we were a little nervous at first. So we're very enthusiastic about how the Evernote team is listening and learning from us and um, being very responsive. So I would encourage you not to worry about the acquisition. I think it's gonna be a good thing for Evernote. Mm -hmm. So also this notebook that I'm sharing with you because my presentation is literally notes right in Evernote, which you'll see in just a moment as I change notes. Um, and I will share these notes with anyone who would like to have access to them. You'll see that one of the things that you could do in Evernote is decide who can see your notes with the share feature. And that way you'll have this information, which will be my contact information and your opportunity, if you would like, to book me later um, for more in-depth training or more specific one-on-one, -on -one, which is usually really helpful when you're getting started. But let's do first things first. I'm going to jump to that now and you'll see now I am in my actual Evernote. What I had done there before, I'll show you what it was. If you want to see a full screen view, all you have to do is click this new expand note. That's something Legacy didn't have, which is pretty cool. So now the distractions are gone of all the left navigation. So first things first, let's talk about how you should think about Evernote. To better understand what we're going to be doing walking through all these notes, let me just give you the basic structure. There's notes, notebooks, and stacks. Notes are where you put everything. So if you clip something, copy it, type it, write it, it's in a note. Notebooks hold notes. So there's no such thing as an independent note. Every note lives in some notebook somewhere. Mm -hmm. That's why structure becomes very important very quickly, and we'll get into that. And then you can put related notebooks together in what Evernote calls a stack. That's a little hard concept. So I've developed some visuals here. So if you think about a bookcase, the bookcase can be filled with binders or what Evernote calls notebooks, right? And each mm -hmm. notebook is filled with the notes related to the topic that, of that particular notebook. So like this might be miscellaneous notes. I'm just using this graphic I grabbed. <laughs> this could be manuals. This could be um, renovation projects, doesn't matter. The idea is related notebooks live in a notebook together. Then. If you picture the notebook shelf, you put notebooks together that are related. So um, it's like if you were filing in your filing cabinet and all your financial files are in the red folders and mm -hmm. all your medical records are in the blue folders. Same concept, right? You have the, the notebooks that are related together. In Evernote speak, we call that a stack. A stack is like oh, a bookshelf, okay? Book shelf. okay? So if you had the top stack was all personal notebooks, could be one notebook about a bathroom renovation, 
Uh, one notebook or more than one notebook could be for sons and daughters. Uh, and the third notebook might be related to an organization for which you volunteer. Another notebook could be related to travel or vacations, but all those things are personal. So they can mm -hmm. live in a personal stack. Now, sometimes stacks get big. That happened for me. My personal stack is way too big to be one stack. I have a family stack and every person in the family has a notebook. It's just, you know, notebooks don't have to have a ton of notes in them. It's just, you have to be always thinking about how is it organized? How will okay. I want to go hunting for this information later? The fastest way is to have structure to the notebook so you know where to go quickly. Not that you can't use search. Search is very powerful and I'll show that, but it's nice if you know where things are and you can just go. Um, and then I just gave another example here too of the second shelf could be business notebooks. So you could have a notebook that has all the notes of your clients, or like in my case, every client has a notebook of their own because my clients tend to be repeat. And so I want a notebook just for each time that we interact and have work together. Another notebook could be notes on suppliers or vendors. If you have those, if you're running a business, a third notebook should definitely be an operations manual. In fact, you might want that as a stack. So you could divide out marketing from HR, from financial and have a notebook for each of those. But we'll talk about that a little more when we get into naming protocols, but you've got the idea. So to make this concept a reality, you have to start somewhere. When you start with Evernote, they give you one notebook. I think it says first notebook or something like that. I haven't started a new account in a while. But that first notebook wants to be labeled as your inbox, and that's on purpose. So let's get into talking about notebooks. We're going to open this up again for you again. But before I do, just a quick view. These, So you have, in terms of your navigation, you have... The left panel is your main navigation area. I'm going to close that for just a sec. And the middle is where I was talking about one of the options for how your brain works. So up here, you've got a lot of options. You can sort these notes by the title, which is what I prefer to do. I work alphabetically. Sometimes, though, I want to find the newest um, note that got updated so I can resort it, and it will jump that note right to the top. That's the newest wow. one that was updated. So... I can surface that one quickly or the date that it was actually created. Again, it puts it up there. That's the newest note in this notebook. So it puts it at the top. We'll go back to title because I needed to run that way today. <laughs> you can sort them. You can sort the notebooks by what tags they have, whether it contains any of this information. Wow. Oh my goodness. They keep adding more. I, every time I teach this, I'm amazed at how much more I learn. Um, by the, the date it was created. If you want a note that was created in the last seven days, right? You click that, see the, the rest of them went away. Mm -hmm. mm. So that's a filter wow. that you can do for searching inside of a notebook itself, especially, I mean, I've got some notebooks that have 150 notes in them. I think I'm gonna have to use this filter more because it's gonna save me <laughs> some time. Um, and same with updated, right? You can put a timetable on that. So that's the filter icon. Then you can decide how you view it. I'm using something called snippet view, but maybe you want it to be bigger. You want more cards so it can show up like that, or you just want a list. You, you know what everything is and you just want to see it by title, or you want a completely different view and you can set it up like Outlook does as a top list, which is also adjustable in height. Okay. This is not my favorite because I, I feel like it limits the screen I'm working in. So I'm going to take mm -hmm. it back to snippets because I like that. And I can't get into all of this, but I'll show you some more of some other options you have. You can decide if you want images to show up. I like that. That helps me seeing the visuals. Um, but you could decide to turn that off and then all those little pictures will go away and you'll just have descriptions. You can have a little body text or just the pictures. You could show tags if you're using them. If they have reminders, it will show the reminders or not show the reminders. Now, what's lovely about one of the recent updates is you can set this view for just this notebook. It's not universal to every uh, notebook, okay. which is really cool because it depends on which kind of notebook you're in. If it's work or personal, you may want different views. So the idea that you can set the view by notebook is a beautiful thing. <laughs> so let me jump back up to here. Um, actually, we were in creating notebooks, weren't we? So I've been jumping around already. So let me open this up and we'll talk about creating notebooks. So your first notebook, you want to set up to work just like your inbox and email, whatever email you use, whether it's Outlook, Gmail, whatever. We all have an inbox. Everything comes in somewhere. The best way to organize incoming content into Evernote is to do the same thing, to have this default notebook 
where everything coming in will go because then you could just go there like you do in your inbox and mail and sort it into the proper notebooks because you can send emails in from your email accounts. You can clip things out of Web Clipper. Now, Web Clipper is a unique entity in that you can actually tell it right then, right there, okay, send it to this notebook. So you don't even have, you can bypass the whole inbox process. But it's just generally easier to think of um, getting your content started with going all into one place. And then you just go one place and sort from there. So it, I say it's like when you get snail mail from the physical mailbox. These are bills, these are letters, these are checks, these are junk, <laughs> right? We do that sort. So you do the same thing with this. So you can either create a new notebook or rename the notebook um, that you're you're starting with. And you can do it a couple of ways. You can start a new notebook by going under the file menu and choosing new notebook. Or if you go over to the left navigation and you scroll down, you'll see in bright green, the words new notebook. You can click that there too. Um, you even have the option of clicking notebooks itself and you can come into the whole area where it shows notebooks. So I'm gonna show you mm -hmm. that one really quickly because that's helpful to know. If you wanna see all your notebooks, you can come right in here and they'll be listed. Now you saw me click this, these are stacks. So if I wanna see everything under these, I have to click that little arrow and it will open it. And there are a lot of things that you could do over here, which I won't have time to get into right now, but you can, um, you have some options, adding to shortcuts, adding to stacks, um, adding a note to it, sharing the notebook, renaming it. So if you have a notebook that's just your first notebook, that's one way to get that renaming done. It's just come into the word notebooks, come over here and click rename notebook. Presto change it. Come in and call it dot inbox. Why dot? That's something people often wonder about. Why mm -hmm. they tell me why dot in front of that title? Well, if you're sorting over here alphabetically, dots go first and you can see that, right? Uh, My uh, first yeah, note yeah. has the period in front of it. Then number one comes next. So it takes precedence, any symbol. You could use a star symbol too. So a symbol alphabetizes first, numbers alphabetize second, and then letters alphabetize Good third. Man. So you can force a certain thing. So for me, mm -hmm. In teaching this course, I have always wanted these notes to run in a certain sequence. I didn't label them alphabetically. So if I were to go alphabetically, they'd be all out of order. By using numbers, I force them to sequence the way I want to run through this little mini course on Evernote. So choose a new notebook, name it dot inbox, and then um, I'm gonna go back into notebooks because I just realized I don't have it in here, but if you want it to be default, I'll show you on a different notebook so I can't show you on my inbox. When you click these three dots over here, you get the option to come um, into here and set it as default notebook. See that mm -hmm. command? That's how you want this one set. You'll see I don't have that choice here because it's already the default notebook. All right. So the one that you create dot inbox, you want to be your default notebook. And that's what will force the inbound content to go there first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, when you create a new notebook, and this is every single time, it will ask you, share the notebook or personal? I always recommend just choosing personal to get started, get the notebook created. You can always choose later to share the notebook, but it's easier, it's a simpler process to start creating a new notebook. And I'll just show you that real quick. So if I'm in here, I'm gonna create a new notebook. Um, I'll just call it test. And, oh, they must've changed that on me. <laughs> they used to ask you right then and there if you wanted to share it or not. So apparently they're not doing that anymore. So scratch that thought. <laughs> but if I wanted to share this notebook, um, all I would have to do is I could choose to right click over here and I get the command to share it. And then sure. I can decide, and this is really important. You have some choices here you need to know about. You wanna control what access people have to the content in the note. If you don't care what they put in there or what they change, go ahead and give them editing and inviting power. That gives them everything. That's like administrative level. Mm -hmm. If you don't want them to invite anybody else or share that note with anybody, then you would just choose edit, right? If you want them only, and this is a valuable tip, to view the note, like let's say I've got a proof of something I want to share with a client. I don't want them to touch it. Mm -hmm. I just want them to see it. I would give mm -hmm. them can view power. 
That's all they can do. They can open the note and look at it. They can't type in it. They can't share it. All they can do is look at it. I can also later revoke that access. So mm -hmm. in a notebook like this that is already shared, um, when I come into the sharing section, you can see all these people have been shared on it. I could come in here and say, okay, just we'll remove access. She's not sharing it anyway. <laughs> but you can see where I have restricted to these people that I've shared it sure. with. All they can do is view it. So that's a really valuable hint when you're trying to decide how to control the content of the notes and nobody can take away or add to it. Okay. Uh, that's a whole lot about notebooks. Hopefully that was helpful. Yes. Um, yes. Um, we're going to jump into the notes that go inside. And this one we've got to open up because there's a lot of good stuff in here. So a note is just like it sounds. It's any piece of information you want to save for later. Now I say, I use Evernote as my backup brain, quite literally. Like if this app ever went down, I'm in trouble. Everything I need to know is in here. Anything I need to keep organized is in here. And then if I'm out and about and I need to look it up, I can grab my phone. Or if I'm here at my desk, I can go into the app. Or if I'm with somebody else, I can log in from the internet. It doesn't matter. All the content is where I am all the time. And that's a wonderful thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Simple things like I, when we were doing a home reno project, I took my phone. I was taking pictures of bathroom vanities. And I was capturing SKU codes. And then they were there when we got home. And my husband and I were like, okay, well, should we do this vanity or that vanity? We had all the content right there at our fingertips without going back to the store. That's a beautiful mm -hmm. thing, let me tell you, for saving time. If you're working with a contractor particularly, and he says, go to go to Lowe's, pick out the vanity that you want. Then you can send the, the note to the, the um, contractor and say, this is the one we picked. And he'll either say, buy it or, okay, we got it. We'll pick it up, whatever. But, you know, it's such a communication tool to be able to save everything right in here. Mm -hmm. Um, and these are just some images of different things you can do. You can see this with some sketching going on here. This one is a scan. This one is probably a picture they took of things sitting on a desk. You could keep pretty much any kind of content you can imagine in a note. You can type, write, or even record audio notes from any meeting. That's simply under this. We'll get into this a little more, but over here, you just choose audio recording and you literally click that. And it starts recording and you turn it off when you're done. So if you're doing an interview with someone out remotely, uh, super easy to have an audio file built right in here. Um, you can edit on the flies. You keep seeing me too. <laughs> uh, clip websites as articles or URLs for future reference. If you're writing a book or you're doing social media or you're blogging and you're gathering information out and about on the web, you can collect it all in Evernote and then go back and take that as inspiration for whatever you're trying to write. Um, you can annotate photos and PDFs for quick communication with teams working remotely in field offices or building sites. So let's say somebody's out in the field and they're taking a picture of um, a piece of the construction project that the architect has to look at. There's something wrong or that he needs feedback. All he has to do is share the link back to the architect who can look at it and go, oh, wait, you know what? No, do this. Or that looks fine. That's approved. Move forward. But it's so fast, right? And it's saved. It's permanent because it's in Evernote. Um, so it's a really great tool for that. You have just watched for free the first 20 minutes of a one hour premium episode for our premium members. If you want to watch the rest of this episode and all our future premium episodes, click on the link in the description to sign up as a premium member. Quick message for our premium members, just to reinforce what Sandy just been saying, in the very near future, she will be back uh, to give you more information on how you can save time and run your business much more efficiently with Evernote. And we'll be going over tasks, to-do lists, Google Calendar integration, tagging, and templates. That was really quick. And then, Sandy, for both our um, general audience who only got part of this presentation today, and especially our premium audience, how do people contact you if they want to get first-hand advice and tuition on Evernote? Well, you can find me at my website, which is www.sandysolves.com. And um, if, if for some reason that doesn't come up, you can do Sandy Rodriguez, but that's S-A-N-D-E-E -E, solves or rodriguez.com. Either one will get you there. Um, you can also find me on LinkedIn at, um, at Sandy Rodriguez. Again, S-A-N-D-E-E-R-O-D-R-I-G-U-E-Z. And all over the place, if you do hashtag Sandy Solves, you will find uh, everything I've been putting up on, in the social media world. Um, so lots of different ways to find me. 
Excellent. And for the audio listeners on our podcast, I really advise you to go to our website, theyakishow.com, and look at Sandy's video because you'll get far more benefit watching the video than you will just from listening to it. So, Sandy, from my side, once again, thank you. And back to Kathleen to round it off. Oh, it's been a pleasure having you on the show again, Sandy, Um, and we really look forward to having you again. And thank you all so very much for tuning in. And until next time, take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.